Welcome to St Mary's Hatfield's Thought for the Day for Thursday the 4th of June. Our first hymn was written by an Anglican bishop in the 19th century. Bishop Reginald Heber was from an Anglo-Catholic end of the Church of England spectrum. He loved hymns and he wrote them. We'll be hearing this one again this coming Sunday because Bishop Heber wrote it to be sung on Trinity Sunday, which is this coming Sunday, when he was vicar of a parish in Hodnet in Shropshire. It's a hymn that starts with God rather than us. God who is different, perfect, holy, and we are drawn in with those who are already worshipping him to come close to him. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Let us pray. Lord God, you are holy and worthy of praise. Help us today to join with the whole of creation in being caught up in your goodness, your holiness, and your mercy. Amen. This week we're concluding our look at various people we encounter in Matthew's Gospel. On Monday we considered the people of Jerusalem in Jesus' day. On Tuesday we came across a woman who poured some expensive perfume over Jesus' head. Yesterday we thought briefly about the infamous figure of Judas Iscariot. And today we encounter Simon Peter, but not at his most glorious hour. Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 to 75. Peter disowns Jesus. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again, with an oath, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you're one of them, your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. He who thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. Peter was so adamant that he would never let Jesus down. He said to Jesus, Lord, if this bunch let you down, I'll stick with you. I'm your man. You can count on me. Then all of a sudden, He's doing what he said he would never do, and what Jesus said he was going to do. He disowns Jesus three times. Not exactly his finest hour is reported in all four Gospels. 
The accounts are similar in each gospel. There are variations. One thing that Matthew mentions clearly, that Mark, Luke and John mention more by implication, is that Peter's accent indicates him being a companion of Jesus. We're told that those standing around go up to Peter and say, surely you're one of them, your accent gives you away. He has a northern accent. He's a bit of a Geordie. In fact, 11 out of the 12 disciples are northerners, northeasterners from Galilee. Only one disciple is a southerner, Judas Iscariot. At this point in the gospel story, Jesus is under arrest. The disciples are basically keeping a low profile. A couple of servant girls think they've seen Peter with Jesus. Then others approach him, who must have heard him speaking. They say, come on, you're one of those Jesus followers, we can tell by your accent. And Peter says something like, oh hi, I don't even know the man. <laughs> Excuse my accent, uh, but you get the point. The Jesus movement was seen as a northern movement, a Galilean thing. The 11 disciples who later spread the Christian message of resurrection are all from the north of Israel since Jesus, Judas's departure. They have to have distinctive accents. And here's a thought. Jesus had a northern accent too. He's a Galilean. A north-south divide affects many countries. The Industrial Revolution certainly started north of Watford. In Africa, many countries have a Muslim north and a Christian south. I'll always remember Christopher Eccleston in his role as Doctor Who saying, in his northern accent, every planet has a north. OK, let's not labour the point, but there's a little corrective here that we could helpfully remember. Jesus isn't British. His skin is not white. He never said, verily, verily, I say unto thee. He didn't speak English. We have a natural tendency to make Jesus in our image and God in our image, but there is a difference or two. Peter, the northerner, the northeasterner, does not do himself proud in that courtyard, disowning Jesus three times. But Jesus knew he'd do it. He sticks by him. He later forgives him and he recommissions him. And who is it that stands up on the day of Pentecost and speaks to the confused bunch about what's happening? Peter does this, but he almost blows it. If a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, we need to be careful about our weaknesses. He who thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. The encouraging thing is that God doesn't give up on us that easily. The encouraging thing is that in our strange way, or in his strange way, our failures can lead to our successes, our greatest successes, if we understand ourselves better because of them. The Victorian housewife Annie Hawkes wrote a hymn that expressed her constant need of God and her dependency upon him. It's a healthy reminder that we have the same need ourselves today. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh bless me now, my Saviour, I come to thee. need thee every hour, most holy one, O make me thine indeed, thou blessed Son. I need thee, O oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, O bless me now, my Saviour, I come to thee. 
Let us pray. We commit to God the continuing unrest in America as we pray for peace and restraint at this time and for racial justice to emerge, a fundamental change for the future. We pray for our own resilience in lockdowns, it continues and yet eases, and we pray for all the challenges and opportunities that it provides. We continue to pray for those who are ill today, especially those known to us in the moment of quiet. We remember those who have died. We pray for those who are grieving, and again especially those whom we know today. Lord God, we need you today, at every hour and for everything. Amen. We are still very much in the season of Pentecost, and this collect is the one which we're using this week. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God is working his purpose out, as year succeeds to year. God is working his purpose out, and the time is drawing near. Nearer and nearer draws the time, the time that shall surely be, when the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. All we can do is nothing worth, unless God blesses the deed. Vainly we hope for the harvest time, till God gives life to the seed. Nearer and nearer draws the time, the time that shall surely be, when the earth shall be filled with the glory of God, as the waters cover the sea. Holy and loving God, help us to trust you today. In our weaknesses may we find your strength. In our failures, may we find forgiveness and hope. May we live in such a way that the earth will become more visibly filled with your glory, God, as the waters cover the sea. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love today and always. Amen.